very, very uh, difficult day for me, as I'm sure it is for a lot of our citizens here in the city of Detroit. You know, when I took office four years, over four years ago, I said Detroit was in a financial crisis. And we tried to work our way through this situation over the last four years, but uh, it's been very, very difficult. And uh, this afternoon, uh, I had the opportunity to sit down with the executive team, uh, and Kevin and I uh, talked about some of the things we needed to do on a going forward basis. I, uh, Kevin had another meeting at that point and uh, gave me a call uh, this afternoon to tell me that the decision had been made uh, to file for Chapter 9. Um, one of the things that I want to say uh, to our citizens is that um, as tough as this is, uh, I really didn't want to go in this direction, but uh, now that we are here, we have to make the best of it. Um, I, I think uh, Kevin and the team that he's brought together um, has a lot of history uh, of succeeding. Uh, this is very difficult for all of us, but if it's going to make uh, the citizens better off, uh, then this is a new start for us. So with that, uh, I'd like to bring uh, Kevin Orr to the mic to give you a little more detail. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon. As those of you know, today we decided to file for Chapter 9 protection in the Bankruptcy Court for the Eastern District of Michigan. We did not take this action improvidently, but after careful thought and an assessment, as we have been saying for the past several weeks, of the negotiations that we have been having with our various stakeholders on behalf of the city. We also have been saying for the past several weeks that time was drawing nigh and that given the terms of my appointment as emergency manager and the amount of time that I have left, that we were going to have to make some difficult decisions. As has been widely reported in the press throughout the past week or so, or even more acutely earlier this afternoon, those decisions were coming to a head. And so we eventually decided that it was an appropriate time to file for Chapter 9 protection. I'd like to say this, though, to the citizens and residents of the city, first and foremost which is to reassure them that as far as things are concerned for the provision of services and the conduct of city business, it is business in the ordinary course. Services will remain open, paychecks will be made, bills will be paid. Nothing changes from the standpoint of the ordinary citizen's perspective. What this does do is give us an opportunity to begin to address some of the city's overbearing debt, which we have discussed ad nauseum at this point, begin to provide the level of services and address the health, safety, and welfare concerns of the citizens of the city and to move forward to a fresh start for this great city. I don't really have much more to say in this regard now because we'll have further discussions about what this means going forward tomorrow, but I do think we have a few minutes for us to be able to take a few questions Mr. from you. Or do you anticipate how long this process could take? And do you have concerns about the timeline, given what we've seen in other cities like in California? Uh, we do have concerns about, I'll take your question in reverse order. We do have concerns about the timeline, but some of the questions, the preliminary questions, such as eligibility, and frankly, given the magnitude of the debt and the showing that we've been making for fully the past two months now of the severity of Detroit's insolvency, we think those questions will be answered in short order. Uh, we are planning to get through this process as expeditiously as possible. We are targeting to get through this late summer or fall of next year. Mr. Mayor, I guess uh, the comments that Mr. Orr made, obviously the people of Detroit are hearing this news and may not really understand what this means for the average Detroiter. Can you talk them through it again about how this will affect police, fire, and just their everyday quality of life? I think the first thing that we need to understand, as Kevin has already said, is that it's business as usual. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, you got to improve upon that. That's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, he did say that, uh, you know, the, the paychecks for our city employees will continue, services will continue. Uh, I think over the medium range, uh, we will hopefully see things start to improve, especially the services that our citizens require and deserve. So um, as Kevin continues to negotiate uh, with the credit market and as we put ourselves in a better position to have a little more cash, we've got to think about reinvesting in the city. 
Uh, right now, most of the reinvestment has been in downtown and midtown. We've got to think about our neighborhoods where so many of our people live. Uh, we've got to start reinvesting in those areas and the services that they require. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, this is not a day that anybody looked forward to, but now it's here. We've got to work through the process. What kind of changes are retirees going to see? We don't know yet, and because we're still in negotiations with those groups, I'm not going to say anything in that regard other than we look forward to continuing negotiations with both our creditor side and our employee and retiree side. Yeah. Yeah. Alexis? You're already saying that um, the city has not met the threshold for bankruptcy because they've not negotiated in good faith, and that has to happen first before you do that. What do you say to um, that argument that they're launching? Well, I obviously disagree with that argument. I think we've we've spent a lot of time negotiating good faith. We've had over 100 meetings uh, with stakeholders going forward. We provided a lot of information, and frankly, we'll continue negotiating good faith, and I hope we'll get to a position now where we'll be able to reach some sort of agreement that will be cooperative even in this process. But, Alexis, quite frankly, um, I've been over backward in the past uh, three-plus months to, as I said initially, in this very room, first day to offer an olive branch, to reach out to constituencies, to provide accurate information, to hear their concerns, to sit down in a series of meetings, to have my public meeting, to go forward with our then uh, uh, June 14th uh, stakeholders meetings, to have a series of follow-up meetings and continual one-on-ones. Quite frankly, anybody who takes that position just hasn't been listening. Two more questions. Yes. Proceeding to begin. We realize it's a federal court from the state perspective. Does the governor need a stamp of approval? And where are we tonight as far as what it begins? All the approvals that are necessary have been granted. I transferred a request. The governor approved it. And the petition begins with filing this afternoon, literally. So we are in a Chapter 9, and it has been approved. Receive all necessary approvals. Go forward. No, the, 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 the judge goes into a different category, but as far as filing the petition, Quinn, that's you, Quinn, as far as filing the petition, that's been done. So we are in Chapter 9 in federal court. Well, Quinn, you know, there's an automatic stay that attends in Chapter 9, and all litigation against the city should be stayed. So we, we anticipate um, getting the benefits of the state so the city can have a fresh start. I mean, this is really about the first step and starting this city towards a course of restoring goods and services, health, safety, and welfare for the city, and growing the city, as the mayor just mentioned. Anybody who comes to the city knows that downtown and midtown is thriving, almost all the way up to North End, okay? How do we get these services out to the neighborhoods, 140 miles, square miles of city? We don't have time for more delaying tactics, for more litigation, for business as usual. We've been saying that again and again and again. Everybody knows I have an 18-month term and I have 15 months left in it. So we're going to start and we are going to get the level of services that this city needs. Well, it stays the litigation and it gives us some additional cash, but as been reported, and we'll give you more information on this, we're even now, even to this afternoon, we're working on a different additional resolutions and settlement agreements with some of our creditors that will free up some of our cash so we can get right at it, literally, literally, within days of getting at some of those services. Yeah. Have you submitted your plan of adjustment? And so, for I'm sorry, if not, when do you plan on doing we have not submitted a plan of adjustment. Uh, you, you would probably anticipate that one of the first things we're going to do is to request the court to set time, tames, uh, time frames and timetables for motions and objections, particularly with regard to eligibility concerns. More papers. The only thing filed this afternoon that you're going to see is literally the petition and some of the preliminary documentation that's needed. But we're going to file more first-day papers either later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, and that will spell out exactly what we're going to do.